Cord cutting, Senator Joseph McCarthy and Rhode Island are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is February 9th, 2023. It is the 40th day of the year. You got 325 days left. It's the sixth Thursday in the sixth week and the 51st day of winter. You got 39 days left until spring. And I got a cold, so we're gonna make this short and sweet. I just got back from a cruise. That's why we skipped all of last week and I'm just dying from this cold, but I'm pushing through. Today is National Cut the Cord Day. This is my favorite day. I've worked for Comcast Cable and I have worked for Netflix. Like most of us, I grew to hate the cable companies. Even when I worked for them, I learned I hated them even more. They've been gouging us for decades. And when streaming came along, all of a sudden people started going, I don't need cable anymore. And they called that cord cutting. You're cutting the cable cord. The day is described as break free from the expensive cable bills on February 9th by celebrating National Cut the Cord Day. The streaming movement has rapidly grown over the past 10 years and it really doesn't show any signs of slowing down. Before it was just Netflix, now you got Amazon Prime, Disney, HBO has a pretty good offering, Hulu, everyone's got a streaming service now. In the early days when it came out, Comcast and other cable companies did everything they could to try and kill the streaming movement. They tried to block you from getting Netflix on their internet packages. They added data caps, you know, so after a certain amount of data that you get charged more. Did all these little shady things, try and maneuver you back to paying for television. It's a dinosaur now, not many people pay for television. That being said, the cord cutting movement has kind of slowed down. It was a serious drop for years, but now they're at the point where it's kind of leveled out, I guess you could say. I don't know the exact numbers, but let's put it this way. Let's say back in 2010, 80% of the homes had cable or satellite, something like that. 2015, that had dropped down to 70%. Then by 2020, it was probably down to 50%. And here in 2023, it's probably slowed down to where 45% of the homes have it. Something like that. I don't know the exact numbers, but that's how it was. It was steep decline in the beginning. Now it's kind of slowly declining. And even when the cable companies were trying to slow this down, like I worked for Comcast and they started offering a streaming service, but they still tried to use those cable tactics. Like, sure, you could stream from us, but you got to pay a monthly thing and get a box. You know, they always want you to have a box. And when they got rid of the box plan because no one was going for it, they made it an app and they still wanted you to pay like an extra five bucks a month for the app. I don't know where it is now, but you know, if they still do that, who knows? Anyway, yeah, today is National Cord Cutting Day. All right, let's see what else February 9th has given us. 1778, Rhode Island becomes the fourth U.S. state to ratify the Articles of Confederation. 1825, after no candidate receives a majority of electoral votes in the U.S. presidential election of 1824, the United States House of Representatives elects John Quincy Adams as the sixth president of the United States. 1870, U.S. President Ulysses S. Grant signs a joint resolution of Congress establishing the Weather Bureau. 1950, the second Red Scare. U.S. Senator Joseph McCarthy accuses the United States Department of State of being filled with communists. So, if you don't know, Senator McCarthy back in the 1950s was a relatively unknown senator for the most part, and then he did this speech on February 9th, 1950, in Wheeling, West Virginia, to the Republicans' women's club there. Now, it wasn't filmed, it wasn't recorded, but he went on and on about communists and the State Department, things like this, and this kind of launched him into the spotlight. He was the senator from Wisconsin and really wasn't known until that point. And he just went on this whole thing about how communists are spying on us and they're in the State Department and just went on and on and on. Typical of a movement or a situation like this, he used, well, if you're not with me, you're against me, so you must be a communist. So a lot of people played along with all his shenanigans for quite some time until they were just kind of sick of it and all his little witch hunts went nowhere. There was some spies that were found, but they had nothing to do with his investigations or his hearings. Side note to this, he also had what they call the Lavender Scare, which was a thing where he claimed homosexuals were in the State Department and wanted them all rooted out. Now, the reason this is called the Second Red Scare is back in the 1919, 1920 time, there was the first Red Scare. Just a bunch of nonsense. 1964, the Beatles make their first appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show, performing before a record-setting audience of 73 million viewers across the United States. 
2021, the second impeachment trial of Donald Trump begins. Movies released on February 9th, 2018, the 1517 to Paris. This was a really interesting true story. Three American friends stop a terrorist attack on a train in France. Now, this is based on a true story, and it was directed by Clint Eastwood. Very interesting thing about this, he actually used the three friends play themselves in this movie. If you haven't seen it, I'll give you a brief overview. So these three childhood friends were in Europe traveling. One was in the Air Force, one was in the Army, and one was just a civilian. But they'd known each other since grade school. They're on this train kind of dozing off, you know, just traveling. And uh, they heard a noise and they look up and they see a guy with no shirt on. He's got a backpack on and he's got a AK-47. He'd already shot a man. Man saw him come out of the bathroom with the gun, tried to disarm him. When he couldn't, he tried to run away. He got shot in the back. Well, this kind of wakes up three friends. People are hiding. People are screaming. And they decide to do something. One of them, named Spencer Stone, he charged the man. And the man would have shot him. But his ammo was faulty. He shot and the bullet didn't go off. Spencer Stone had been trained in jujitsu, basically got on him and was trying to choke him out. This guy pulls out a, like a box cutter and starts cutting up his back of his head and his hands and stuff while his friends are trying to get a gun out of his hand, trying to get the knife out of his hand. And eventually they choke him unconscious. Here's the thing. The guy, the terrorist gets arrested. These guys get all these awards. They become celebrities. They're on like Jimmy Fallon show. And the guy that got shot in the back. He survived. Nobody died in this. In reality, there was potential for about 200 people to die. One of my favorite things about this story is their American military and American citizens. France gave them citizenship in 2018. So they all have dual citizenship. Really interesting story. The movie was a little hard to follow because the whole attack and the whole climax of the movie in real life took less than five minutes, probably less than three minutes. So it is just filled with a ton of flashbacks, flash forwards. It was a little confusing, but it was still worth seeing because it's based on a true story. And from what everyone says, it's exactly how it was. These three friends lived through it and they acted in it and they were also the fight choreographers. So they just went by what really happened. Born on February 9th, 1942, Carol King, author of numerous number one hits, including favorites such as You've Got a Friend and You Make Me Feel Like. She's also a successful performer. Well, of course she is. Carol King's amazing. She was the inspiration for Neil Sedaka's Oh Carol. After the two dated in high school, she responded to the song with Oh Neil, in which she spoofed their relationship. I think she's amazing, but I'm a little strange. I'm one of these guys that likes that old 1970s slow music. I don't know. I'm weird. I've always been that way. I think it, growing up, my mom listened to it, so you know you get used to it. All right, on February 9th, 2022, we lost Betty Davis, the singer, not the actress. She's an American funk and soul singer who gained fame as one of the most influential voices of the funk era of music. Her debut album was released in 1973 and was self-titled. She released a total of four studio albums throughout her career. She was born and raised in Durham, North Carolina. One of the first songs she wrote was at age 12, and it was called I'm Going to Bake That Cake of Love. She released a total of 16 singles starting in 1963. She was married to Miles Davis, but that was short-lived. She kept his name. She was born Betty Gray Mabry. On July 26, 1944. Side note, Miles Davis was 19 years her senior. Davis died from cancer at her home in Homestead, Pennsylvania on February 9th, 2022 at the age of 77. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.